Welcome back. Tonight we continue our series of look back reports. Normally we focus on the past year, but since 2019 is the last year of this decade, we're looking back at the biggest stories of each year. And tonight, 2011, and the biggest story for that year is the capture and killing of Osama bin Laden. The news was especially impactful for a Northfield family who lost a son aboard Flight 93 on 9-11. Chris Conti spoke with them the day after we learned of the bin Laden raid. Patriotism runs deep in Northfield, Minnesota, deep inside the hearts of Beverly and Tom Burnett. And I was pleased, so pleased, that the Americans did it. Nine years, seven months, and 21 days ago, they lost their only son, Tom Jr., as Osama bin Laden's network of terrorists carried out his plans on 9-11. I felt this is the beginning. Now let's find the rest of them. News of bin Laden's death Sunday night evoked memories of that gut-wrenching day in September. I usually don't rejoice <laughs> at someone's death, but I think this was the right thing. So too were Tom's actions as terrorists took control of United Flight 93. He called his wife Dina four times from the air that day. In his last words, Tom said, if they're going to crash this plane into the ground, we're going to have to do something. We're going to take back the airplane. If he would have had a few more minutes, he could have uh, taken back that plane. Tom and 43 other people died that day, but the Burnetts wonder why bin Laden had a proper burial at sea while their son's ashes are still spread across a field in Pennsylvania. Uh, it was uh, such a waste of such a great guy, such a great guy. They know that nothing will bring him back, not even the death of the world's most wanted terrorist. Perhaps, though, this is the beginning of finding some closure. I think he would have said, this is a good move. This is the first thing. Got to do more. And uh, he's right. Also of note in 2011, we had a presidential visit in southeast Minnesota. President Obama decided to pay Cannon Falls a visit back in August. 500 people heard a 15-minute speech and also got to ask some questions. And as we'll see in a few days, it wouldn't be the only presidential visit to our region in the decade. And